Okay, Psalms 119, verse 97. And that little character and the M-E-M -E is Min. Min. That's the Jewish alphabet. Men or Min. And we probably could get it wrong, but it comes close. Not going to go to hell because, you know, he said the Jewish character wrong. How, oh, how love I thy law. Now, this is remarkable because the writer has no New Testament at all. He has no Gospels at all. All he's got is the law of Moses. And what's he say about the law of Moses? I love it. There's no death, burial, resurrection of Jesus yet. There's no writings of Paul. No book of Revelation. Yet he says, I love the Lord. Lord. Law. He loves the Lord too. You love the word, you love the Lord. It is my meditation all the day. I think about it, I pray about it, I, I, I don't do, you know, yoga, I don't do, you know, those, those, you know, get yourself in crazy positions, I don't do the yin-yang, I don't do that other junk. I do the Word of God. And you know what, you know what that verse right there, meditation, that's our verse in the New Testament, I study to show myself approved unto God. So yes, there's a call to study in the Word of God. Though he don't have the 66 books in the Old Testament, you're to study. Why? Because it's your livelihood. It's what God approves and what God doesn't approve. Now, we're not saved by the law. We're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else. All right, but now that I'm saved, what can the Old Testament show me? What things God like and what things God don't like. I can find out what problems are from the Old Testament. I say I want to be a Mormon, and I want to have multiple wives. Well, it would be wise to read about David and Solomon, how multiple wives were trouble. I go through the book of Proverbs, what if I don't want to chasten my son? Well, I look at Eli, I look at David, I look at how their children were and what kind of problems they caused. I got eyes for another woman. I know Jesus said, Whoso looked upon a woman, the less have his heart already committed adultery with her. And God said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not steal. It is so important, the law, that they removed it from the classroom and they removed it from the, from the courthouse because it causes guilt. <laughs> and we sure don't want people of crime to have guilt no thou god through thy commandment had made me wiser than my enemy why what is the enemy of god a man that does not adhere to the word of god and what is his wiser to be known of i know what god likes and i know what god doesn't like and I try to the best ability that I can to do what God likes and not what he don't like. For they are ever with me. For they are ever with me. I can't get away from them. I can't go to be a guru on a mountaintop somewhere and live as a hermit. I got to live amongst them. And as I look at their, their lives, I got to look at my life and I got to see what the Bible, though he has only the Old Testament and the law, the, and we have 66 books of the Bible, and they're going out drinking. What's the Bible say about drinking? They go out and, and they put money in gambling. What's the Bible say about gambling? And they harass and sass their wives. What does the Bible say about your wife? Now we're going to see Jesus 99, 100, and 101. I have more understanding, 
relationship to God than all my teachers. Now, at 13 years old, he's at the temple, and he has them this completely fabricated. What is this young boy here telling us? He does, he knows more than, than us scholars. And no, Jesus was not about a carpenter's business because he said, Mary, woman, I'm about my father's business. And he was at the temple. He was at, not at the carpenter shop. And nowhere in the scriptures does it say he did the job of Joseph as a carpenter. He assumed. And I assumed that if you cut the moon in half, you'll find peanut butter and the chocolate center. Well, you're crazy. Do you have biblical? I was taught by men. Where's the proof? And there are teachers and educators that today they're more scholarly than God. We know more than God. We even correct the Bible. We add, subtract, and footnote to, you know, because God did not mean that. It's nonsense. For thy testimonies and are my meditation. Listen, Jesus went off prayer all the time. And Jesus studied the word of God long before Paul wrote it. They handed him a scroll. And he knew exactly what Isaiah said. And he knew exactly what the reference is. Come on. Sunday school teachers. Somebody say, okay, they give you a book, a chapter, and a verse. Now, I've had this done. I was in the church. They did this. It was, they, we had it called Men's Preaching Night. And the church would do it to, to, to challenge us and put us in a predicament. And they would give us weird scripture that we would have to preach 15 minutes about. Now, I'm telling you, they would come up with some <coughs> weird scripture. And it's a challenge. How can you do it? If you study the Word of God enough that you can teach a, a Bible verse that they give you to, to catch you out of hand? Does not Peter say we ought to be ready to give anybody an answer of hope? You don't give them an answer of what, this is what men taught me. That could be wrong. I understand relationship with God, understand Jesus, more than the ancient. Why? Because Jesus is older than the ancient. When Abraham died, and he was ancient, you know, he died with, with, with still having faith and not fully having what God had fully given him. Jesus knew more than Adam. And there's no more ancient than Adam and Eve. I don't think Adam ever appeared in heaven. Jesus did. Because of thy precepts. Again, the word of God. I have refrained my feet from every evil way. And that's definitely Jesus Christ. Without sin. That I might keep thy word. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Definitely. You cannot deny that fact. The feet of Jesus never took him of an evil way. I have not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me. Again, yeah, judgment is right and wrong. And we get people come up, thou shalt not judge. <laughs> judge not, thee should be judged. Well, lady, man, give me your driver's license and the keys to your car because you don't need to drive. If, if you don't want to judge. And I believe me, I've seen, I don't know if it's just Florida, but I've seen people go right through a red light. That's not judging. God has taught the judgment. God is the one that taught the Levites that are teaching the people. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That's a natural sweetener. 
that comes from God. And B. Now, let's take literal. Jesus said, John chapter 6, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you can't go to heaven. Why don't the Catholic Church take their Bible and, and, and cut it up and eat it? Wouldn't that be taken literal? Job said, I have seen the word of God more than my necessary food. John, here, take up this little book and eat it. And I think Ezekiel was the other one. How come the Roman Catholic Church don't take Bible eating literal? It's supposed to be part of your diet. You're supposed to have a day, and some people always say morning time. Not, anytime that, that you set a time of day, don't put a restriction, because, because everybody's time is different. But you should have a part of your day where you are reading and studying the scripture. Whether it be morning, whether it be noon, or it be afternoon, or it be night. Are you more faithful to the word of God than dessert? Or your coffee? Through thy precepts, the word, I get understanding. And the understanding that Jesus has in 9900, we can have the same understanding and have the same mind of Christ, Paul said. And it comes through the Word. How can I get the mind of Christ? Study the show thyself. I don't want to do that. Therefore, I hate every false way. In 101, Jesus never walked the evil way. Not only am I not going to do that sin and go that way, I'm going to hate it. All right, the next letter in the alphabet is quite interesting. None. And no, that's not Catholic. And there's a man in the Bible whose father is none. Joshua, the son of none. And it's not a female. And it's equivalent to our letter N. The number 50. The, 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 number, the, the letters of the Jewish alphabet are given letters. Like the Roman numeral. None means or could mean as in Joshua's father. Fish. And there is when it comes to the Coast Guard and navigation. There is what you call a nun buoy, and it's red, and it's the right side of the ship, the starboard. Imagine red, right, starboard side of the ship. I know some of this red will get you right with God. Thy word. Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's quite interesting. Let's go to John chapter 3. And quite of a message I have cockroaches in John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, and let me look at. Unlike my preaching Bible. Uh, John chapter 3. Verse 18. He that believeth on him, Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. That's Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil. Hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. That his deeds, may, that his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth. Cometh to the light. John chapter 1. Verse 1. 
In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word, capital W, was with God, and the Word, capital W, was God. Verse 7, the same came as a witness and bear likeness of that light, capital L, where all men through might be believed. He was not that light, capital L, but he was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. This was the true light, capital L, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So back to Psalms 119, 105. And if your Bible has the Jewish alphabet, none, I told you, it's, it's a red buoy out in a river or harbor, and your ship is to be starboard to starboard. That's the right side of the ship. The word is a lamp unto my fight, feet and a light unto my path. That's Jesus. Well, how do I know what the right way is? Get your nose in the book. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Verse 97, the law is thy meditation. You want to know what your, your feet to go and the path to go in this darkened world? It's the word of God. It's your navig navigational beacon called a nun. And that, that navigation beacon is red. And it's on the right side of the ship. And I believe when, when Peter and the men were out fishing one time, and, and Jesus says, cast thy net on the right side of the ship. Scripture with Scripture. Plain and simple. I have sworn, make an oath. I will perform it. That's forsaken today. People make many oaths and they don't do it. That I might keep thy righteous judgment. And this sworn, this oath here would be according to the law. God, I'm going to give you the tenth. God, I'm going to bring the goat. I'm going to bring a lamb. I'm going to show up the three times. I'm, what the law says to do, God, I make an oath. I'm going to do it. That's what he's saying. I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm going to treat him well. I'm going to respect my neighbor. I'm going to respect my parents, as the law and commandments said. I'm going to respect my neighbor's wife, according to the law and the commandments. I'm going to respect your holy days, according to the law and the commandments. That's what he's saying. I will keep thy righteousness, thy righteous judgment. That's all by the law. We'll look at something in a moment. I am afflicted very much. I'm getting a lot of trouble. Paul said, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, if the world hates you, know it hated me first. John writes, marvel not the world hates you. And he said in verse number, where is the enemy? Verse 98, enemy. If you think Christianity living right according to the Bible, you think it's going to be hunky-dory and going to get you a fortune, you need to get a new preacher. Because even the Old Testament saint had persecution as, as not a Christian, but as a follower of God. I inflicted very much. Quicken me. Make me alive. Almost dead. O Lord, according unto thy word. Throughout Psalms 1, 9, according to the word, according to the word, according to the word. What is our life? What is our prayer life to God? What is our standing? What is what ever to be? The who, what, where, when, why, and how? It's in the word of God. Who am I supposed to be? It's in the Word of God. Who am I supposed to marry? It's in the Word of God. What am I supposed to do? It's in the Word of God. Where am I supposed to be? Word of God. How am I supposed to Word of God. When? Word of God. It's not by a horoscope. It's not by tea leaves. Not by tarot cards. Not by a Ouija board. But by the Word of God. 
And if it's anything but the word of God, you will be judged and found at fault, saved or lost. Except I beseech thee the free will offering of my mouth. Again, that's the oath of the Old Testament law. There was described a free will. I am going, this is not in the law. But Lord, I love you so much and you've been so faithful, Lord. I am going to bring you an offering above and beyond what the law says to do. Paul calls that in the church age, he calls it gracious giving. He calls it giving from the heart. He calls, you know, you want to do it. No one's forcing you. That preacher gets up there, you have to give to the law, you have to go. And then. That's not giving wonderfully. That's not giving free will. That free will is also carried over in the New Testament when he writes in the Corinthian church. You're not being forced to do it, but you're giving of a contrite heart because you want to give it. And then when you go in and pervert the scripture to prove something that we're not even, you know, you prove the scripture, the law says you have to, and the law says you have to, and the law says you have to, and the law mentions the tithe, and Malachi mentions the tithe. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are we saved by the law? No, we're saved by grace. Are we under the law? No, we're not under the law. Problem. Now, if you want to go and preach and teach tithing without the law, Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek. And Jacob said, before the law, I'll give you a tenth, Lord. You don't need Malachi. But then go with the, with the scripture in 1 Corinthians. Paul says, listen, not of necessary, but give of a willing heart. That's what he says. It's what the Bible said. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. As we've been reading, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Does not the Bible say, study and show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be changed, rightly divine in the word of truth? So we're going to go look at the law to show. In the church age, that's not rightly dividing. Not rightly dividing. My soul, verse 109, is continually in my hand. That's not the place to put your soul. You can drop it. You can lose it. It's not where your soul belongs. It's out of place. And some commentators I read, they say that's trouble. My soul is continually at my hand. It's not where it belongs. Yet do I not forget thy law. All right. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet. In opposition to what was already said, do I not forget thy law? So he's already telling you that the soul in my hand, that's, that's, that's wrong. But what is right, <coughs> excuse me, yet I don't forget thy law. Now let me ask you a question. Here's a plain simple question. How do you not forget something? And it's where we're looking here, the law. How do you not forget the word of God? Scripture memorization. I've got a verse right here, and I, I, maybe another week. I think I've got it down back, and I'm going to go learn, try to learn another one. Fifty-one years old, going on fifty-two years old. As slow as I can do it, I'm still trying to do scripture. The scripture before I had that, I, 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 just, I know the context, but man, I, I blew that one out of the water. I try the next one. But not to forget the law. You know what he was doing? He was memorizing the law. I don't think your average person in Israel had a copy of their own law. I think it was at the, at, at this, uh, no, it wasn't synagogue into Babylon. He would go to service. He would go to temple service. He would go listen to the Levite. He'd find, you know what? Hey, you know what? I like that part. And he would write that down and he'd go home and he'd memorize it. The wicked. 
have laid a snare for me. You're going to have enemies and they're going to set traps. And of all the traps that can be set to try to catch a Christian and try to destroy a Christian and just try to destroy a minister and try to destroy a faithful servant. And they did it to Jesus countless times. I read today where they sent and feigned people. That means pretend, act. So teach your children Sunday school and, and teach your children vacation Bible how to act and pretend like the Pharisees and the scribes and the Romans. But they, they pretended to be followers of Jesus so they could catch him at his word. Nowhere do you find in the Bible acting holy and right. That's up there with pride and proud. They're trying to catch the psalmist like they try to catch Jesus. Yet I err not from thy precepts. Now we're going to come back to that in a moment. Thy testimonies, the word of God, and what the living God has done for Israel, have I taken as a heritage, an inheritance, forever. God, what you've done for us, what you've done for me, and, and everything that you've done with the law of recording, Lord, that is my legal documentation say, it's mine. That's what he's saying. In all legal, uh, legality of the law, I don't mean Moses, I mean of the law, law courts, lawyers and judges and everything, the law of the Lord and the testimonies of the Lord and the word of the Lord, I claim that to be mine. Inheritance. But it's not really an inheritance because it's a heritage. Why is it not an inheritance? Because God had not died yet. And you don't get an inheritance until someone dies. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. What? The testimony. What God has done. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always. I have, my heart is set. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. My heart, says, this is what the law says to do. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it in my head. I'm not going to do it because my mama's making me do it. I'm not going to do it because the Levi's making me do it. I'm not doing it because the mayor is making me do it. I'm doing it because my heart says I want to follow God. This man, if he was in the church day today, he'd be saved. He's done it with the heart. Even unto the end. Death. Now we have a remarkable statement here, verse 110. Yet I have not erred from thy precept. Now we know the only sinless perfection is Jesus Christ. But were men able to, out of the law, to obey that law strictly? Luke 18. Luke 18. And we're not going to look at perfect men, because there is none but Jesus. In Luke chapter 18. Verse 18, Luke 18, 18. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do in inherit life? And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good save only, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Well, we've talked about the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear uh, do not do do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet thou lackest one thing. Jesus did not rebuke him. 
He says, Lord, I kept the commandment. But he really didn't. He says, sell all thou hast and distribute them to the poor and then treasures in heaven. Well, he had great treasures. I mean, he's guilty of covetousness. But one commandment of ten, that's not bad. I mean, Jesus already said, a man that looks upon a woman already commit, uh, uh, look at her with lust, has already committed adultery. Thou shalt not kill. I mean, he's never thought evil of his neighbor. He's never, ever taken anything without permission. He's never stolen a cookie from his mother. He said, no, I've never stolen. And Jesus said, yep. But we do have a problem with covetousness. I can't say that. I mean, as adultery, all right, I've looked upon women. Not kill. I've hated people enough to kill them. Steal. Never mind much. I was a shoplifter as a child. False witness. I've told a lie. Honor and father and mother, I've sat in my bedroom and screaming at them without them hearing after they give me a whipping. And wish God had put me to another family, wish God would take care of them. I'd be guilty. And I said, all oh, I can't if I said Jesus, all these I kept in, Jesus would be looking at me like, All right, play the tape, roll the roll. I can't say what that guy said. Now, one more other place. Job chapter 31. And I, now, this is before the law. There's no law in Job. Job 31. I made a covenant with my eyes. There's the oath. Why then shall I think upon a maid? Adultery. For what portion of God is there above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked, if I've sinned, a strange punishment in the workers of iniquity? Does not he see my ways and count my steps? If I have walked in vanity, or if my foot has hastened to deceive, if I had, do if I had done anything that's nothing, of no value, Or if I've done anything deceitful, let me be weighed even as the balance that God may know my integrity. If my step hath turned out away, and my heart walketh after my eyes, if any blot out, if any, if any blot has cleaved my hand, there is covetous right there. If I followed my eyes. If my heart had been deceived by a woman, adultery, and if I had laid with my neighbor's door, a covetousness, then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down before her, for this is a heinous crime. Yea, it is iniquity to be punished by the judges, for it is a fire consuming destruction and would root out my increase. If I have despised the cause of my maid sir, manservant or my maid sir, when they contend with me. <coughs> what shall I do when God rises up, when I have visit, when he visited, what shall I answer if I have mistreated my employees? Did not he, God, make me from the womb, make him the employee? And did not one fashion us, the employees and the employer in the womb? If I have desire to have, if I have withhold the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, if I mistreat the poor and the widower, or if I've eaten a morsel of myself alone and the fatherless had not eaten thereof, no food, people with no food. For from my youth he was brought up with me as a father, and I and I have guided her from her mother's room, my mother's room. If I've known a widower fatherless and, and not helped them out. If I have seen any perish, 
for want of clothing or any poor without covering. If I've seen people laying in the streets naked or their garments are ripped and, and, and they just don't have enough for sheep. If his loins had not blessed me and if he were not warm from the fleece of my sheep. If I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw, I mean, let's look at all this. Verse 24, if I've made gold my hope. And the whole entire chapter, Job is a pretty decent man, but he's self-righteous. And all that Job did and all that Job was, wow, he's a remarkable man. Yeah, but he's counting his own self-righteousness. This man says back in Psalm 119, verse 10, 110, Yet erred nigh, erred not from thy precepts. I just read you three things from three men. And only Jesus Christ is a sinless perfection. I can't say that. I can't say that. The law was hard. But there are three men. And yet they're found to be sinners. And Jesus Christ is the one to say, without sin, fulfilled all the law. 